Long ago, in the center of a forest, was a lone cedar tree. This cedar tree had been growing there for many, many years, nearly a hundred. She was very tall, stately, and beautiful, but alone, the only one of her kind. And she was getting older, and she wished so much for a companion. So with her strong heart, she sent a message out on the winds that reached the birds who brought them to the great spirit. And she was asking for someone to look after that was like her. And the great spirit heard her prayer from the birds, from her heart. And he sent on the winds a small cedar sapling. And the cedar sapling fell just enough away from her to be able to grow on his own and just close enough so she could look after him. So suddenly she became Grandmother Cedar Tree. Now as the young sapling was so young and so tender, there were some dangers that she had to protect him from. The first danger were the deer and small animals who might want to nibble on this lovely sapling, nice and fresh and green. So in order to chase them away, she would shake her branches and her twigs and her branches and leaves would make a rattling noise and frighten the deer away so she could save her grandson cedar tree from being nibbled before he had a chance to grow. A second danger that she had to protect her grandson cedar tree from was the possibility of strong winds if there was a storm. Now he was young and he was supple, but even so he could be pulled out by his roots by a strong enough storm. So when the storm was going to come, she would know, she could sense the storm was coming, and she would reach her branches down and her lower branches and she would enfold her young cedar tree grandson to protect him from the winds and the, and the rains to keep him from being pulled up by the roots by the winds. A third danger that could come came in the summer. All the while, grandson cedar tree was growing and he was becoming taller and stronger. But the sun was very hot and very strong in the part of the world where grandmother lived. So in order to protect him from being too hot, she would take her upper branches and her leaves, her summer leaves, and she would make an umbrella of green over her grandson cedar tree so that he would not be burned by the hot sun. So from year to year, grandson cedar tree grew with the protection and the love and the care of grandmother cedar tree. Now there was one more thing, not so much a danger, but even though they were both cedar trees, they were still the only cedar trees in that forest. And sometimes they would get a little lonely for someone like themselves. So she would send out from her heart a prayer, which would be heard by all the birds in the forest. And they would come and sit in her leaves and branches, and they would sing beautiful songs to her and her grandson, Cedar Tree. Many moons passed, many years passed, and grandson Cedar Tree was now tall and strong and nearly as tall as his grandmother. Well, actually, if you look carefully, as she was getting older, she was losing her upper branches and some of her lower branches, and her bark was getting a bit dry. So in fact, he was taller than she was by now. But she was old and she was tired. And one day she said to her grandson, Cedar Tree, grandson, I am old, I am tired, I am ready to give up. I have lived a long life and I have seen you grow and I'm happy and fulfilled. And grandson, Cedar Tree, said, no, grandmother, you cannot leave me now. I love you and I don't want you to be gone. You are my best friend. So grandmother, Cedar Tree said, but how can I look after myself now? I can't, I can't protect myself from the elements or from the animals or the birds or the insects. And grandson Cedar Tree said, now grandmother, do you remember when I was young and you were afraid that I might be nibbled at by the deer and the small animals? Well, I am now strong and I can shake my branches and shake my twigs and leaves so that if any animals come and try to bite off your bark, they will run away because they'll hear the noise and be afraid. And grandmother, do you remember 
when the winds would come so strong and howling, how you would reach down and surround me with your loving lower branches so that the winds would not pull me up by the roots. Well, Grandmother, I am strong. I have many branches, and I can surround you so that your branches are not shaken and broken by the howling winds of the storm. And Grandmother, do you remember how when the sun was scorching and hot, how you would spread out your upper branches to make an umbrella of green to protect me from the strong sun? Well, Grandmother, I am now taller than you, and my upper branches can reach far out and cover you with an umbrella of green so that you too can be protected from the scorching sun. And Grandmother, if you are ever lonely or sad, I will send out a message and a prayer from my strong heart to all the birds of the forest. And they will come and sit on my branches, and they will sing to us both and cheer your spirit. Grandmother, when I was young and I was growing, you looked after me. And now that I am strong and you are old, I will look after you. And so it is. Aww. The moon's exhausted her patience with us and goes out for a quick smoke. Sometime later, she saunters back to the night stage, stealing the last show. The moon is a hoe, she's a star-studded honey. Show her your money. The moon's a virgin. She searches the back alleys for signs of Eden. The moon is a mother. Like a mother, she cries for her innocent child. The moon's a daughter. Like a daughter, she disappears. Time of the dark moon. The moon's a friend, she jump ropes with North Star till dawn guides her home. The moon is a friend, she will never forsake you, friends till the end. The moon's bandito obliterates the shooting stars till they fall from grace. The moon is a mother, like a mother she cries for her innocent child. And the next poem is a poem in French and English, and it was a poem I actually dreamt a long time ago when I was in Paris. I wrote up, I woke up in the middle of the night and just wrote the poem on a piece of paper in French. And now I'm going to do a bilingual. La lune et le trottoir, the moon and the sidewalk. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il y a? But what's going on? La lune est sur le trottoir, the moon is on the sidewalk, and the sidewalk is shining. Mais écoute, chérie, but listen, sweetheart. La, mou la lune ne coûte rien, the moon costs nothing. Et le trottoir, tout, 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 ce que, ce que, ce que. To a, to a, to a. And the sidewalk, all that you are. Ooh, laisse la tranquille, je t'en prie. Hey, leave it alone, I'm begging you. Regarde, chérie, là-bas. Hey, look over there. Le totoir se respire maintenant. The sidewalk is breathing into itself. Secret, passionnant, secret, Passionate. Et la lune, la lune est dure et inflexible. The moon is tough. The moon will not give in. That's it. So thank you. And that, that last one was actually a little 
you know when you fall in love how you uh, take on the aspects of the beloved so the sidewalk is taking on the aspects of the um, the distance and romance of the moon and the moon has become a uh, tough like the sidewalk so there we go <laughs> thank you it was the night before christmas when all through the house Shards of wrapping paper lay about as I grouse. About all the money I've spent this season, with my children tucked in their beds, I remember the reason. When out in the kitchen arose such a clatter, I hurled the couch to see what was the matter. When what to my tired eyes did I see? Another dozen cookies burnt unrecognizably. <laughs> what was I thinking? I'm only one man. Wrap gifts, beat cookies in full jars up with jam. Sounds like a job for a woman, I fear, but the girls spend Christmas with Daddy this year. I can't let them down. I must keep hope alive. For hours from now, old St. Nick will arrive. Or so the kids think, as I do my best Santa and smile with a wink. Boy, could I really use a drink. <laughs> Coffee and eggnog and wines of the best, my favorite drinks and foods to ingest, here for the short holiday season when cakes and pies outweigh common reason. Now I know why St. Nick has a belly, all those cheese baskets, crackers, cookies, and jellies. I must remain focused for tomorrow's big day. With five places to visit, I'll be gone all the day. First to Nana's, then Grandma and Gramps, then to Tessie, she's my great aunt. Later I'll drop the girls off with Mommy to open more gifts, a task that by now seems daunting. Wait till you see how many presents kids today get. When I was little, I got a Barbie Corvette. Yes, that's it, and yes, I'm a boy. But it was on sale, said my mom, oh so coy. <laughs> I was hoping I opened my sister's by mistake, but a vet is a vet, pink, real, or fake. So fill up the carriage, it's a different generation. Put it on credit with no limitations, at least until the end of the year when Christmas comes back and kicks your rear. Is this what it's meant? Is this what it's come to, a commercially Christmas, trying to please and keep up with the Smithers? I thought Christmas was meant to be celebrated with joy, not competing to buy and give the best toy. Christmas is about giving, family, and love, a special time of year sent down from above. So this year, as I hang the stockings by the chimney with care and hopes my new Xbox will soon be here, I nestle myself down snug in my bed as dreams of Christmas's past dance in my head. For a moment, I feel like a child again, struggling to sleep as I dig way back when. It's morning time and the kids are jumping on me. Get up, Daddy. It's almost 6.30. I fight to my feet and then follow them in, the look in their eyes, the drop of their chins. As I watch them open their gifts, I'm taken back just a bit. I smile and relax. This makes it all worth it. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. For many long days have the heavens been hidden. The unending torrents and sea spray are one. And I, the sole witness of their somber union, am heartsick and wish for the sight of the sun. Ragged and tattered, the sails flap in frenzy. The helm will not answer, except to the sea. The compass is spinning, not worthy of trust, delirious, matching the rage of the deep. Where is the sail-swelling breeze of my homeland? Where is the current that bore me along? Where is the vision that moved me to travel? The voice of a lamb that I heard in a song. The minstrels, the dancers, the singers of ballads I heard in my home in the days of my youth. Were they all liars or just know no better? Never sailing themselves and so not know the truth. The stars that could guide me are shrouded in tumult. The eyes that could see them are shrouded in gray. The deck is uncertain. The hour uncertain, uncertainty watches and waits for the day. Time out of mind. Time out of mind, years beyond reckoning for my father and his father before. The river rose running over the indistinct lips to paint them with a life-giving mud, rising and falling as it did for my father and his father before, rising and falling as the gasping hordes that slither and gleam over the deck in the day's heat. The river, the living breath of the land, the life-giver, the sustainer, 
I know no other Lord. The tax collectors come out of the south, proclaiming new kings to replace the old, new glories, new laws, and the river rises. Priests preaching their mysteries, new gods for old, cut from that which the tax collectors left behind, and the river falls. Dynasties, divinations, what care I for these? The river is all. I sane the river in her flood. I sail and seize her bounty. The years rising and falling beneath my boat. They go, where do they go? They go with the river into the unquenchable sea. Riding the flood, herding my charges, supple and eager to live, the net of my heart grows old as did that of my fathers before me, letting go what it can no longer hold, as his father before him said, it does not matter now. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, they don't a thing pass, not even a mouse. The children be nestled good and snug on the floor, while Ma passed the pepper to the crack in the door. <laughs> then Ma at the fireplace done roast up the ham, stir up the gumbo, and make bake the yam. When out on the lawn, they got such a clatter Make it sound like old Boudreau when he fell off that ladder. <laughs> I run like a rabbit to got to the door. Trip over the dog and I fall on the floor. Cause when I look out the door by the light of the moon, I think, man, you're crazy. Or got old too soon. Cause there on the bayou, when I stretch my neck stiff, there's eight alligator. Pulling a skiff <laughs> and a little fat drover, so lively and quick, I know right away it's got to be old Saint Nick. More faster and faster the gator they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Hey Gaston, Tibor, Pierre, Alce, Jeanette, G Suzette, Celeste, and Renee, to the top of the porch to the top of the wall. Make crawl, alligator, and be sure you don't fall. Like Tan Flo's cat through the treetop, he fly when a big old hound dog come and run himself by. Like that up the porch, them old gator they climb with a sleigh full of toy and St. Nicholas behind. Then up on the roof, it sound like the hail when those big alligators sat down, down their long tail. Then down the chimney, a yell with a bam. St. Nicholas fell down and he fell on the yam. <laughs> Sacre, he exclaimed, my pan got a hole. I done set myself down on them red hot coals. Up to his foot, he jumps like a cat, out to the floor where he land with a splat. He was dressed all in muskrat, from his head to his foot. And his clothes is all dirty with ashes and soot. A sack full of plaything he held on his back. He looked like a burglar, and that's for a fact. <laughs> his eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. I think he'd been drinking the wine from Blackberry. Because <laughs> his chin was like rose, and his nose was like a cherry. On second thought, maybe he's been lapping up the sherry. <laughs> With snow white chin whisker and a quivering belly, he shook when he laughed like a strawberry jelly. But a wink of his eye and a shook of his head make my confidence. I don't got to be scared. He don't do no talking, gone straight to his work. Put plaything in stocking, then he turned with a jerk. Put both of his hands there up top of his head, cast an eye on the chimney, and then he done said, with all them hot coals and that burning hot flame, me, I ain't going back by the way that I came. <laughs> so he run out the door and he climb up the roof. He ain't no fool him for to make one more goof. He climbed to the roof, climb up to the roof and he jumped in his sleigh. 
No. <laughs> Climb up to the roof, they jump into the sleigh, and he crap his big whip. The gator moved down, and they don't make one slip. But I heard him exclaim as a splash, and he go, Merry Christmas to all, till I see you some more. <laughs>《Was It That》announced with heavy heart, I'm leaving. You know the prodigal one, the long journey taken. And would he still have come home if he had hired himself a nice Himalayan shaman? Because all these albatrosses on life's path sure do make it hard sometimes. And on the journey, as your sandals scrape on the sand of desert wasteland, eventually the black marks settle in the crevices of your feet and the unwashed hair starts to kink, you start to look like a distant cousin of Bob Marley. And we're not even talking about what is going on in your mind, the near nausea coughing up at the thought of leaving what's familiar, the eerie d drive in the dark, the twists and turns gone wrong. New land to adapt to where no one knows your name. It looks like you are from another planet who just can't seem to fit right in until you speak of sounds that are the same. And your little bed in the night, in the dark where there is no light of the familiar, the monsters are not far, you hear them growling and prowling about to come. And with one foot on the pavement, you consider running back to where you came from. But you hold on, then perhaps it clicks if you stay one day longer when the rain shifts and the sun births itself through the dark clouds and the flowers say, come closer, and someone asks your name, and you see a little rabbit in the shadows of evening staring at the stars overhead who turns to look at you and whispers, it's right here. These are the same stars above with a bed that seems bigger to fall into at night now. Morning light is steaming in and you can see the same truth in the new person's eyes that you pass by. And your shoulders relax as surroundings seem to blur and tuck you in. You might actually, within time, instead of turning around, running backwards from where you came, go forward now into this new place that is now home. That's my point. Sweet.